Dr. Roberts analyzes the powerful influence of Greek civilization which affected the development of the Roman Empire and Christianity. What the Greeks left behind was much more than the list of things which happened to have come down to us. For one thing, that list is incomplete. Uh, we don't have a lot of the tragedies that were formed at the great civic festivals. We have only a few buildings, and those mostly in ruins or damaged. The whole achievement of Greek civilization was much greater than the sum of its parts. Perhaps that explains why people make their own choice of importances within it. For me, the important things were the Greek respect for reason and their belief in the possibility of the autonomy of the individual in his self-directed free life. Those were new ideas. They hadn't cropped up in the great civilizations of Egypt and Mesopotamia. Of course, in practice, they didn't always work out very well. But it's always a selection of the past and not the complete past that is, in fact, what shapes the future. Part two of The Triumph of the West on Monday at 10 past eight on BBC Two. Now, on to highlights of today's Ryder Cup play at the Belfry in International Gothic. They're all going to be here for Christmas night. That's Blake and Crystal, old Dominique and Amanda, Jeff and Dex. Well, far from the tint are the Trotter family who fit to Hullenbach after being asked to deliver diamonds from Amsterdam in a special Christmas edition of Only Fools and Horses. But now, BBC One, for the first of a new series, a jewel in the camp of Maplins brings a sparkle to those who rally us with the cry, Hi, Eddie, hi. Well, there's another BAFTA award-winning programme later tonight on BBC One when Thora Heard stars in a cream cracker under the city at 9.35. <laughs> Tomorrow, Wildlife on One visits Southern Africa and meets one of its lesser-known inhabitants. This is a spring hare. It lives all around the Kalahari, and for its size, it has about the biggest feet that there are. Although the spring hare's legs are like a kangaroo's, and its ears are like a hare's, it's not related to either. It is, in fact, a rodent. Step into the world of the Kalahari Bigfoot, tomorrow at 8.30 on BBC One. Now, a new series on BBC One providing romantic comedy for Anton Rogers and Eve Matheson in May to December. Into 86 with BBC One. The Living Isles. A natural history of Britain introduced by Julian Petty. A mere 10,000 years ago, the last ice age released its arctic grip on Britain. And from beneath the melting ice were born the British Isles that we know today. These mountains and valleys were shaped by the movement of the ice sheets and the glaciers, which, when they receded, left behind them a barren landscape, a blank page on which wildlife, moving in from the warmer south, was able to leave its mark. And that was only a beginning. Our story begins here in the most arctic part of Britain, Ben Nevis and the highest Scottish peaks. From here, where relics of Ice Age time still survive, the story of the Living Isles unfolds around us. Julian Pettifer introduces The Living Isles beginning on Sunday at 5.40 on BBC One. Striking a nostalgic chord on BBC Two in a couple of minutes, there's a fantasia of the Fab Four, John, Paul, George and Ringo, charting their careers from the Cavern Club days through the fame and fortune of the 60s to their eventual breakup and providing an insight into the complete Beatles. Here on BBC One, we've Francis Coppola's presentation of the classic children's story by Walter Farley about a young boy who's shipwrecked with a horse. Taking the bit between his teeth, he sets about taming the Black Stallion. Well, next week's film with Sean Connery is The Molly Maguires, and that's at five past ten next Monday evening and tomorrow evening. Barry Norman joins us at 10.15 with Film 85, which includes a look at a new film from that master writer of horror and suspense, Stephen King, which includes, apparently, an unusual treatment for people trying to give up smoking. Before that, at 7 o'clock, it's time for Telly Addicts with Noel Edmonds, followed at 7.30 by the first of the week's journeys to Albert Square to meet the EastEnders. Ray Brooks is involved in what he hopes will be a big deal at 8 o'clock. Barry Took looks at your points of view from the post back at 10 to 9. And following the news at 9.25, there's action with Cagney and Lacey. 
Film 85 is at 10.15, and at 10.50, in the first of three programmes with Desmond Wilcox, we see again the visit he made to P.C. Philip Olds, the young policeman who was gunned down and left paralysed, but determined not to accept life in a wheelchair. And with Plague of Hearts with Dr. Michael O'Donnell at 11.30, that's tomorrow evening here on BBC One. Now look at the weather, and Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, northern and western parts of England will be rather cloudy at first tomorrow without breaks of rain. Brighter weather with showers, wintry on hills, will however reach Northern Ireland and western Scotland early in the day and all other areas later. Central and southern parts of England will remain rather cloudy with outbreaks of rain, the rain tending to become heavy and more persistent in the afternoon. It'll be mild in the south with temperatures around 13 degrees Celsius, that's 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but northern part will turn colder later in the day when it will also become windy. Take one dark night in November, add one adult, a tin box with a lid, and a torch. Mix in a liberal sprinkling of children of various ages and place a few handfuls of well-chosen fireworks all together in the box. Then take out the fireworks one at a time, close the box, and read the instructions carefully using the torch. Light the firework at arm's length, preferably with a safety lighter, and then stand well back and wait. And wait. And wait. Never be tempted to return to examine a dud. It might not be. Add a little sparkle for good measure, and what have you got? the perfect recipe for a safe and happy Guy Fawkes night. It's called the Firework Code, and it's yours free whenever you buy fireworks. Remember, on the 5th of November, follow the Firework Code. That was a public information film. Well, before we leave you, a reminder about tomorrow morning's Tuesday call on Radio 4, beginning at 5 past 9, when your questions on racial tension will be answered. And... If you'd like to put a question to the panel, the lines will be open from 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and the number to ring is 01, if you live outside London, 580-4411. And that's the end of another evening here on BBC One. Thanks for being with us. Perhaps we'll see you again sometime tomorrow. And now from all of us here on BBC One, a very good night to you. Good night.